Today on Mundane Man, just a guy doing everyday chores, uh, we're going to do something a little bit different today. And it's not an everyday chore, but it's something that needs to be done if you like to eat. And by the look at me, you know I like to eat. The oven is not working. It's a we have a Samsung gas range and gas. It's also a gas oven. And when we try to uh, put on the bake cycle, it will not work. Uh, the flame will not ignite, and the gas valve will not open. And the most common problem with these types of uh, ranges and a lot of gas appliances is this ceramic heater will burn out. And it, we're going to replace this today and see how it all works out. Now we are going to be working inside the oven. And we'll have to take out the bottom tray here, take out all the racks as well. And we're going to pull out the warming tray here and that's where the connections are on this particular model of Samsung stove or range. Others, there is a panel on the back that you'd have to uh, pull off to get to the connector. Ours happens to be within that drawer so it's a little bit handier. Now the first thing you want to do especially when dealing with any kind of electrical appliances is you want to unplug the AC power side of the range. On this one, the range, like the clock functions and the control, they use uh, 120 volt, the warming tray uses 120 volt, and the convection portion uses 120 volt as well, and then the rest of it is all gas. So um, you can either go behind the range and unplug it, or I'm going to go down and turn the breaker off because my panel is marked and I know which breaker to turn off. So let's get at it. sliders on it similar to a uh, dresser drawer or something. There's tabs on either side that you just push down on one side pull up on the other and the drawer slides right out. So now inside the oven we have these two screws here, Phillips head, that we're going to take out. And you lift it from the back and then pull away these two tabs that hold it down in the front. You bring that out. And then there's a heat shield here that distributes the heat across the whole base of the oven. You take that out. Two Phillips head screws at the front. that from the front and pull away. There's two tabs that hold it down in the rear. And now you can see the the heat element and then there is the uh, the ceramic element that uh, provides the ignition source. So we're going to pull out that tube. There's two screws, one at the back, Phillips head, and one at the front that's also Phillips head. And we're just going to angle this element out. You just pull it away from the valve at the bottom or the uh, the gas jet, and just kind of play with it to get it out of the out of the way of the oven. And there you can see the offending element. It's got two screws holding it in. So I'm just going to put that back in there, and then we're going to go down to the bottom and disconnect it. See the uh, braided wires here and so that's how we know it's that is the right connection and we're just gonna pull the wires off like that and then we should be able to take the whole element and these wires out from above. Gently pull that through and there we are. 
now that we've pulled the the element out you can see the ceramic unit here it's got two screws holding it on let's double check ours make sure it's the same size it is the same this is a generic brand it's not a true OEM part and that's why if you notice on the ends here there's no connector on it like that one they do provide little morettes so you can tie the two together so what I'm going to do is again I'm going to fit this wire to size we're going to leave this connection on and we'll morette these wires here to uh, connect them so first thing I'm going to do is take out these Phillips screws that are holding the element to the burner That's your little screw and a nut. Just checking this one, I don't see anything obviously wrong with it, but it could be damaged inside the ceramic portion. It's hard to tell. Okay, well let's put the the new unit on. up this little bracket that one started What I'm going to do is just kind of get a bit of a measurement here. I'm going to try and keep it similar length. It's not, it doesn't have to be perfect. It's longer is always better than shorter, obviously. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to snip these wires here on the new one. Try and keep them relatively even here. Like that. Strip the ends off. It looks like it's about a 18 gauge wire. Just like that. And I'm going to snip this connector so that we can reuse that. And I will trim the ends of those wires too. And then what we're going to do is we're going to morette those together. So we've got our little wire morettes here. Just hold those together. Twist clockwise like such. Make sure you have a nice tight fit there. And the same on this side. And basically there we have the new element on with uh, the, the proper connector on it. It would always be best to get an OEM uh, unit so that it already properly has the connector on it, but this will work just as well 
and uh, should do the job for us. Okay, so now we're going to feed the connector and the uh, wires down through the back, uh, through our where we they came out here, and we'll be able to screw the burner back down, and then we'll put everything back together. Okay, let's put it back together. So we're going to feed our wires down like such through that opening in the back. And we're going to get the burner in properly. And we're going to not screw that in just yet. We're going to go underneath and make sure it uh, is the burner is properly sitting on the uh, the gas line and uh, then we'll come back and screw the top parts together. So now you can see here, here's our gas line coming from the valve going to this burner. We gotta make sure that, that the element is nicely lined up on the valve there, or sorry, on the gas line. And then we're gonna connect these wires back together. I think there's only one way it'll go on, but we'll just follow the blue marks that were provided. Let's see if I can do this with one hand. I'm gonna have to try and get both hands in here, I guess. And it's back together. Set that back there. Double check our connections. They feel good. That's connected again. And we'll just kind of push that out of the way. Now we're going to go back into the oven again. Now we made sure the, uh, the burner was properly sitting on the uh, gas line. So now we'll put the screws back in that hold the burner. holes properly here. Put one in. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to take my light out of here, I'm going to turn the power back on and turn the gas on and make sure everything works before I put everything back together. Won't run it for long though, so because putting it back together things get a little dicey when everything's hot. Okay, let me go turn the power on and I'll be right back. Okay, we turned the power back on. So let's fire up the oven and see what happens. We're going to hit bake and start come down here and that element should start heating up and there we go we got fire Looks like a problem solved. Now I'm going to turn that off right away so that I can put the oven back together. Okay, let's put the heat shield back in. We're going to slide it into the notches in the back. Lay it down. Replace the two screws that we removed. Just like that. And now we'll return the bottom tray as well. Making sure to put these two notches in the first at the front, then lay it down. Reinstall the two Phillips screws we took out. One here and one over here. And there.
here we go. And underneath we're just going to make sure that everything is assembled correctly and our wires are out of the way. And then all we have to do is just uh, put in the heater drawer or warming drawer and the bottom side is done. Now we'll put the warming tray back in. Just need to line up the rails carefully. One side, another. Slide back in like that. Now we'll put the uh, wire wraps back in. Well, that concludes another exciting adventure with Mundane Man where we replace the igniter in the oven. Our range is a Samsung FX710BGS, but this igniter is fairly common through most gas appliances for the oven. And uh, I picked this one up at uh, just a regular appliance repair shop. The one I put in was not an OEM model, but it worked just as well. And if I'm doing this again in six months, then I will let you know that always get OEM instead of the uh, generic part but it looks like it, it's going to work just fine so till next time we'll see you again